The conflict raging in Ukraine this year has become a dramatic proving ground for the capabilities of the SpaceX Starlink satellite internet network. It's likely not the kind of stress test that Elon Musk had in mind for the product, but the involvement of Starlink in the war has brought global attention to the role of modern satellite communications on the battlefield, and this has raised a lot of interesting and uncomfortable questions about the future of this technology. Most importantly, who is in control? Right now, we have a privately owned American company as the sole provider of critical infrastructure to Ukraine while they fight as a proxy army for the Western nations working desperately to hold back the threat of Russian aggression, moving in the direction of NATO borders. That's a lot of pressure directly on SpaceX, and it's complicated further by the fact that this private company is footing the bill for Ukraine's defense all on their own. Elon Musk was largely scoffed at when he suggested that the US government should probably start footing some of the bill to maintain service in Ukraine, which is kind of strange considering that the flood of Javelin rockets and Stinger missiles and armored personnel carriers and every other weapon of war moving into Ukraine was bought and paid for by the national defense budgets of NATO nations. We know damn well that the arms manufacturers are not providing their products and services pro bono. But Elon quickly reversed course and decided that he didn't want the Department of Defense to pay him. And we wonder if that wasn't because Elon finally realized what would happen if they did. Starlink officially becomes a weapon of war. There will be a lot of terrible precedents set by this modern war, and the aerospace industry is at a greater risk than ever of being irreversibly changed by the outcome. This is the space race. Starlink got involved in the war very early on. The Ukrainian vice prime minister reached out to Elon Musk on Twitter about providing Starlink terminals, as most of the ground communication infrastructure in his country was wiped out in the first days of Russian bombardment. Elon replied that help was on the way, and somehow, within two days, truckloads of Starlink terminals were arriving in the capital Kiev and eastern regions of Ukraine. It's unclear what exactly Elon had in mind at the time, like most of us, he was probably just in shock at the violent and destructive invasion and wanted to do something to help the people on the receiving end of that carnage. As much as we all admired the bravery of the Ukrainians and their unwavering commitment to fight their enemy down to the last man, it seemed impossible that they could hold off the sheer size and power of the Russian army. But with a lot of help from the military-industrial complex of the Western nations, that's exactly what Ukraine has done, and that means that the Starlink terminals have continued to flow. Elon recently confirmed that there are 25,300 satellite receivers sent into Ukraine, and the Ukrainian government has repeatedly said that Starlink is critical to their national defense. It allows them to maintain communications with the outside world, keep citizens informed, and coordinate their war effort. And that's all come at a cost. Elon revealed that SpaceX is pouring around 20 million US dollars per month into maintaining Starlink service in Ukraine. He wrote on Twitter on October 14th, in addition to terminals, we have to create, launch, maintain, and replenish satellites and ground stations and pay telcos for access to internet via gateways. We've also had to defend against cyber attacks and jamming, which are getting harder. The reason that Starlink is so important is that it provides a capability that no other satellite internet service can achieve. High speed upload and download with very low latency. And the reason that Starlink can do this is because their satellites operate at a low altitude in a very high concentration. Obviously, the distance that the signal has to travel plays a huge role in how responsive the service will be. Most communication satellites orbit the Earth in a geosynchronous orbit pattern, which is typically over 20,000 miles above the Earth's equator. The reason that they do this is because it gives each satellite a much wider field of view. Just one can provide service to a large portion of the Earth. Starlink is operating down around 300 miles, give or take. 
They use layers of orbital shells that function at different altitudes. But overall, the satellites are very close to the Earth. And that means excellent signal strength, but a very limited field of view for each satellite. And that is why there are thousands of Starlinks in operation, with thousands more set to be launched over the next decade. Only SpaceX can do this because their reusable Falcon 9 rocket is extraordinarily cheap to fly relative to other medium lift rockets, and it can deliver up to 60 Starlink satellites in one single launch. The problem now is that Starlink has become so integral to the Ukrainian defense that SpaceX has little choice but to continue down this path into a war that shows no sign of ending anytime soon. A war that could escalate into an unprecedented exchange of tactical nuclear weapons at worst and may settle into a perpetual stalemate at best. It doesn't matter if you're here on Earth or up in space, you want to look and feel good about yourself, which is why I'm excited to have Teach Hanley as the sponsor of today's video. Before getting started with Teach Hanley, I felt like a dummy not knowing what to do or where to start, which is why I love that they include an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. It's literally made for dummies and is super easy and uncomplicated for guys like you and me. Their level one system comes with a daily face wash to get rid of dirt and grime, a two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of dead skin, a morning moisturizer with SPF 20 to protect you from the sun, and a nighttime moisturizer to help keep your skin hydrated and healthy throughout the night. And even if you're not ready to start your own routine yet, the level one system makes a great gift for the holidays coming up. But don't take my word for it. They have over 5,000 five-star reviews on their websites from customers. Members of Teach Hanley get 20% off the retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, pause or cancel at any time, and free US shipping. And because Teach Hanley is sponsoring this video, they are offering our viewers a great deal. Just click the link in the description box and you will get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Just click the link and get started today. And don't forget to click the link below to visit our sponsor Teej Hanley to get 30% off your first box plus a free gift. After publicly making his case that the United States government should be at least helping to cover the cost of Starlink operations in Ukraine, Elon Musk got a ton of blowback. And that wasn't helped by his questionable attempt at international diplomacy that came at the same time. But Elon did have a point. The US Department of Defense paid out $40 billion to arms dealer Lockheed Martin in the year 2021. So for them to cover a 20 million monthly bill to SpaceX would be a negligible amount of money by comparison. I think Elon was really only after them to foot half of the expense. And we did get confirmation that the DOD was prepared to enter talks with SpaceX about a funded contract, but Elon quickly interjected to say that SpaceX has already withdrawn its request for funding. So you have to wonder what happened there? Why did SpaceX make their case for government support and then immediately withdraw? Well, it's not unlike Elon Musk to be spiteful, so it might be as simple as that. He did have a more animated Twitter outburst where he wrote, to hell with it, even though Starlink is still losing money and other companies are getting billions of taxpayer dollars, we'll just keep funding the Ukraine government for free. And according to a report from CNN that cites anonymous sources, which should be taken with a huge grain of salt, the Pentagon had actually agreed to the request from SpaceX to pay for ongoing Starlink service for Ukraine. So that got us wondering. Maybe the DOD said yes to fronting the money, but that must have come with some stipulations, right? If the US government is suddenly paying for this thing, they are likely going to want to have a say in how it's run, and they're going to want to get an inside look at how Starlink operates. Maybe even start calling the shots about where and when the service is deployed. If Starlink becomes an operational tool for the United States Army, then they might decide that they don't want their enemies to have access to the same capability. You don't see the Russians using Lockheed Martin weapons. Now, it's not like SpaceX doesn't already have a relationship with the DoD. 
The recent Falcon Heavy launch on November 1st put two Space Force satellites into geosynchronous orbit. We have no idea what that payload was, and SpaceX specifically cut off the video feed before the cargo fairings opened. But there's a big difference between giving someone a lift to work and letting them into your house. So I think it's very possible that Elon realized he didn't want to sell ownership in one of his most valuable assets. Starlink has always been something that he intended to be used freely around the world. The idea was that it could subvert government control of communication and information. But now, Starlink has proven itself to be critical battlefield infrastructure in a war that shows no sign of ending. And that's a problem. It has the potential to become a much bigger problem for the aerospace industry and orbital infrastructure. We know that Russia has the capability to launch an attack on an orbital satellite, and they're not afraid to destroy objects in space. At a recent meeting of the United Nations on Outer Space Security, a representative from Russia, Konstantin Vorontsov, actually had the nerve to show up and tell the panel that he considers quasi-civilian infrastructure in space as a potential target for retaliation, which is very scary. Obviously, blowing up a United States government satellite would be widely considered a direct act of war. But what if they blow up something owned by SpaceX? That's a weird gray area. Now, picking off Starlink one by one would be nearly impossible. The satellites are tiny, only about the size of a coffee table, and there are thousands of them. But the second stage of the Falcon 9 is vulnerable as it transports the satellite cluster into orbital altitude. It's likely possible that Russia could tag that vehicle with a missile from the ground, and if they know that Starlink is making the difference for Ukraine's defense and actively preventing the Russians from getting what they want, there's going to come a point where all bets are off. I guess it should have seemed inevitable that a communications network with the power of Starlink would have become entangled in geopolitical strife and warfare. It was a simple idea just to make high-speed internet available to every location on the surface of the Earth. A great equalizer, making sure that everyone, at least, has the same opportunity to access information. But real life is more complicated. Now we have to weigh so many terrible possibilities. Does this mean that Starlink is only available to nations that we consider to be good guys? If ground communications were to be knocked out in Russia, would they be given the same support? It's probably not likely. Elon has deployed Starlink to Iran in recent weeks to support the civilian population who are rising up against an oppressive dictatorship. Their government cut access to the internet as soon as a protest broke out. Starlink can fix that, and most people would agree that's a good thing. But what happens when the conflict isn't so black and white? There are a lot of gray areas in the world. What happens when the personal interests of Elon Musk and his businesses are actively involved? There has been a lot of civil unrest in China this year. We don't see a whole lot of it on Western news, but there is a lot of anger brewing on the streets. What if a similar situation to the one in Iran started to play out in China? Would Elon actively support the people in the same way? Would he act against a nation that is absolutely critical to the success of Tesla? Elon's primary global export hub for electric vehicles is in Shanghai. They build a million Teslas a year in that factory. But I don't know. I don't know what will happen. Change is heavy in the air right now, all around the world. We all know that we are never going back to the way things were before 2020, so plans need to change, and SpaceX needs to have a clear plan for what Starlink is and what it's going to be used for. We need to have a plan for what happens when SpaceX inevitably becomes a military target. What do you think is going to happen? This has all gotten very complicated over the past year, and now we have this spectacularly powerful tool sitting firmly in the chaotic hands of Elon Musk. So, what comes next? Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.